it's possible to go through, it's possible to go through the process process here at uh, ILU and be able to make it. Um, came here, as I said, uh, graduated in 91, but did not go immediately. I think I was among the first group to be recruited as teaching assistants of uh, what was then called, I mean, what then was NIST. So I became a teaching assistant and left in 95. So I was a teaching assistant here for about four years, then left in 90, uh, 95. That is when I joined uh, Daystar, where I also served in many capacities, including uh, in BC. Before then, I left for St. Paul's, where by the grace of God, I am the vice chancellor. Um, so when I left here, on the academic side, I went to uh, Stellenbosch University in South Africa. I'm sure some of you have uh, probably Googled and seen what is there at Stellenbosch. I graduated from there with uh, an MTH and a PhD at the end of 2000 came back to Daystar, uh, where I became a Dean of a faculty, a DVC and a nursing VC. Um, all this time, Pamela and I have been together. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, she wasn't able to be here. She really wanted to be here, but she wasn't able to, to be here. I'm an Anglican. So in the Anglican Church, I'm also a reverend and a canon of the Anglican Church as well. Uh, I think that is all. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you. A team, I came to encourage you and to encourage every one of us here and to be able to tell you that you are part of a great uh, fraternity and you are part of a team uh, that has been the vision of many uh, people who have gone through this institution. And uh, quite a number of them are out there serving in different capacities. So thank you very much. I'm glad to see all of you this morning. Thank you. I think one more person just came in. Please come and give us your, your, your name, your year, and the program. <laughs> Quietness, but uh, clearly. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Praise God. Okay, there you go. That's a, it's a morning, it's a raining morning. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, my name is uh, Beverly Lale Momombe. I am. Uh, Oh my God. Oh, because of this, thank you. <laughs> um, yes, my name is Beverly Mlale Mongombe. Um, I was a school uh, a, a, a student here in 2019. I finished in 2019, actually. Um, I, I did a BA in psychology, counseling psychology. Um, right now, currently, I am serving at uh, Rock Assemblies, Harper Center Church. I, am, I head the care, counseling, and small groups department. Uh, so it is so good that I got the teaching and the learning here, and that's what now I'm putting into practice. Other than that, I am a reverend. I'm an Anglican priest as well, but uh, God gave me the opportunity to serve as a missionary in a different church. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, another clap for yourself. And a clap for ILU. And a mega clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Now I'd like to hand over to our Vice Chancellor, Dr. Timothy Kiruhi, for the next part of the program. Welcome, sir. 
Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Beatrice Jenga, and all of you for taking time to connect. I know there are a few people online who may not have done that, we'll give them a short opportunity. But uh, I have a special person that I wanted to introduce before I proceed. When I ask many of you what you miss about ILU, I thought you would tell me about the great lectures and you know good discussions. But some of you have already said it right from this pulpit or this point that the, the thing you miss the most is tea time. <laughs> So I wanted to invite Kamau to come up and greet you. Um, one last issue. Um, na vikiria tunajua na sisi wote. Hakuna mtu sijui. Hakuna mtu hanijui. Nafikiria siku yangu ya kosa nilipokuja huko nilikuta Dr. Kombo. Alikuwa na ofisi huko pale kwa Prefab. Walikuwa na sasa na Dr. Musioka. Ah, ninamshukuru kwa sababu siko najua kusafisha na nilikuwa nimepewa ofisi yake. Lakini hako na complain. Kwa hiyo nikimwona nilijifunza kote na ninafurahia nimemuona tena. Ah, nimefurahi sana kumuona na ile kitu ningemwambia tu tuko na fisi mzuri sasa hii tunaweza jenga hii sura yetu nikisema ni yetu ni kwa sababu mimi nimegrow nikiwa hapa nilikuja nikiwa si nikiwa ni miaka 18 hapo hivi Ah kije ifanya kasi pale pengine niliyesia hapa ah nikaoa nikiwa hapa mkapata watoto tukiwa hapa kwa hivyo hata kama sikuweza kuingia university kusoma niliingia kufanya kazi <laughs> na pia nashukuru watoto tumepata watoto na sahihi watoto wa university kwa hivyo ile kitu ningefanya ningemwambia karibuni nyumbani nikuje tutengeneza hii sura yetu kwa sababu ni yetu sisi wote na Mungu ubariki. Beba na Mr. Kamau. Beb. Mwana Kamau. Mwana Kamau. Thank you. Ndio ndio meeting ni zuri. I think there's an encouragement to be faithful in the small things. God will lift you up in his own time. That's what he is an example of. And thank you, Professor Pombo, for encouraging him. He's still here. <laughs> Maybe if you had been dissatisfied, you would not be here. So thank you to all of you uh, for, for that. Um, I have another colleague. I'll ask him to come up very briefly and maybe say something very, very brief because of time. And then uh, I'll also ask maybe one or two who have not introduced online to do that. So those of you who are online who would like to introduce yourself, just unmute. If you can show your face, uh, do that. And then uh, we'll continue from there. Those of you online, kindly, if you can take a minute to do that. Those who have not introduced themselves. Okay. Okay, oh, there's one more. <laughs> okay. Please come up very briefly, Patricia. <laughs> Why well, yeah, one half a minute because of time? <laughs> okay, that's fine. I know that one who is unmuting. So okay. Should I go on? Oh, oh. Patricia, I thought Patricia is going on. No. Oh, okay, fine. Let me let me take this opportunity to say thank you for this opportunity. And um, my name is Mary Mwangi. I came to ILU in 2007. I was doing um, Master of Arts in Educational Studies. I completed in 2010. 
And then in 2012, I enrolled at uh, Biola University Talbot School of Theology, where I did my PhD in educational studies. And currently, then I finished that 2013 to 2017. Then I came back to IDU and got, oh, I forgot to say that after 2010, I was also recruited to um, the faculty. I served there for, I've actually served at IDU since 2011 in the faculty. And through that time, I was able to do my PhD at Biola, finished in 2017, and now I'm serving at ILU in the School of Education and Social Sciences. But I also, I'm currently also supporting the work of registry as the acting university registrar. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Patricia Waboyiwa Kangede. I came to um, I had UNIS in 2009. 2009. Can you hear me? 2009. I finished in 2012. I was doing a Master of Divinity with Isaac <laughs> somewhere. Yes, and and I can't see anybody else, but there were many people, and they are, they, some are online. Um, I'm, I'm born again. I love the Lord Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. This is the name that we have to exalt, because right now we are having a challenge with the name of Jesus worldwide. Uh, so I love this place because it equipped me to serve out there in the marketplace. I am now a children's pastor at Karura Community Chapel, where we've developed a shepherding model for Sunday school and trainings. And we are doing so, so well seeing children coming to Jesus. So, and I'm back here also um, teaching um, a course called UCC 108. Yes, thank you, Miss. I'll invite uh, one of us, a colleague, to just come very briefly. Good morning. I did not study here, but now I'm part of the ILU family. My name is uh, Heglon Kitawi, Dr. Heglon Kitawi, and uh, I'm heading the, the Transforming Leadership Center. And the Transforming Leadership Center is our arm, ILU arm, in running the short courses. I'll be coming to talk more about it, but briefly, we have opportunities as alumni because uh, we've just been looking at our balance scorecard. And one of the things I pointed out is um, we are a Christian institution and there are areas that we can uh, influence. Uh, just two of them. We have a resurgence of uh, traditional worship. And uh, I'm looking for, especially pastors or even theologians or individuals who can sponsor so that we can be having trainings. Because we have trainers, we have people who have taken it as a burden for, to educate the masses on the dangers of traditional worship. I know it is more in the Kikuyu, but it will come to all of our communities. And so I'm looking for sponsors so that we can offer at a very subsidized price um, um, trainings on giving that education. The other one is in counseling. Many who have passed through here have realized that pastors need others who can also nurture them, who can take care of them because they don't have a way in which to unburden themselves. And so I had a very nice meeting this week with the uh, with Dr. She's called Dr. Jacinta, and she has a burden for that, but we'll need to support them. So I know I'll get another chance to speak, but I just wanted to talk about those two because as alumni, we can work together. And even now we'll have your contacts. I'll be giving more information about the short courses. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kitawi. Um, 
I know there's Mary Obago there. Mary used to be at the front office, some of you maybe in your season. And I remember finding her here. She was very jolly. I used to, that time I was an agent lecturer here. I, Mary, are you able to say hello? And then I'll start my short, very short presentation. Hi, everyone, and praise God. Thank you so much for the opportunity to say hi. Um, yeah, I have missed IDU. I served with IDU community for two and a half years from 2016. Um, yeah, then I transitioned to Parklands Baptist Church, where I currently serve uh, with the young people. And it's a blessing and pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I know at some point we'll have to stop the introduction so that you can move forward, but uh, I happen to supervise this person. So I may not be able to my name is Anajan Wambua Mwangangi, referent from Adi River. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, he has come all the way from Adi River. I know we have one more. Kindly, if you can come quickly so that because of time, those who need to introduce yourselves. Just come and wait here quickly, yes, if you can come quickly uh, because of time. Yeah. The other person, please come, come and wait here because of time. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. My name is uh, Dr. Susan Changorok. I am not an alumni, <laughs> but uh, I worked here for, is it two years, as a program leader, the master's program. And it was really great to work here because uh, I saw there's a lot of community, like people are together and there's uh, a lot of transparency. I think for the first time, I saw university that uh, people are discussing issues financial together in a meeting, <laughs> the busy is there with the lecturers and everybody, and they are saying, this is our budget, I was like, this is unique. And so I think that is something that is unique with this university, because there is a lot of honesty and truthfulness. And that sense of community is what even makes the VC think about the alumni and invite anybody to come here for breakfast. It was really nice. And I'm really happy to see Professor Congo. <laughs> he was my lecturer at PhD at Daystar. I'm really happy to see him. So I really am happy to be here. And most of the students that I supervised, I know they are somewhere here. And I'm really happy. May God bless you. And uh, we will continue to be uh, together and meet in one way or the other. Thank you so much. Hi, <clears throat> my name is Jane Kimani. I have come here with a friend of mine who is an alumni. I'm not an alumni, I'm a prospective student. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, I think uh, you can hear the testimonies of those who have been here as students and uh, so on. Allow me to proceed for now because of time. Um, just to share something very briefly and then I'll have us interact if time allowing. Um, that is online. Okay, so we, I prepared a short presentation. I'll try to run through it as quickly as I can um, so that we have a bit more time for feedback. Give me easy access to there so that we can all be together. Thank you. Um, this is just a reminder. <laughs> I'm sure these are things that you know from the heart, having been here, but we aspire for three things. And we trust that uh, you are our ambassadors out there demonstrating that. That first of all, people will be transformed personally. Uh, one of the people who could not come, uh, she's called Mary Nigeshoro, says that one of the things that really she, she picked up from here, she wished she could be here, she cannot even be online because I think the power issues are across the country. 
she's in, and uh, she's not able to even connect. But this is how spiritually ILU enhanced her life, and it's especially in terms of ministry. And says, of course, because of her, she can now help others. But uh, the more important one is character. We know that Kenya's crisis right now is allow, around the issues of integrity, isn't it? You know, even all the strife that we have is really around that, either the perceived or true lack of it, so issues of character. But you also seek, of course, to equip you with competencies, but also to help you to go back to your context and bring transformation. You can be relevant to those contexts. So those are the three things. And I thought this would be a good time to review whether this is true of you. <laughs> and for those of you who are prospective students, uh, George's wife and the other ladies there, Jane, but these are the things that we seek to produce, character, competence, and contextual relevance. We try to do it in two streams, through, of course, the academics and research line, but also community outreach is an important part. I'm sure many of you, I do remember some days before I joined even ILU, uh, later on when I came as an adjunct faculty, uh, I was working for life minutes. So sometimes I'd come here and I would tell the time of the semester, because if it was close to the end of the semester, as soon as I hit the gate, a few people would run to me to share the four spiritual laws. I knew they were trying to be their targets for... <laughs> but it's an important aspect of life here that we equip you for ministry. Uh, if you have somebody out there who gets afraid that oh, if you go to theological school, you lose, you lose your spiritual fire, not here, isn't it? Because we seek to also enhance that. Uh, we also have the short courses now, as you had, and we invite you. Many of you are qualified to come because now you have experience, you have the academic qualifications, and you can also offer the short courses, and uh, we will do the profit sharing. It brings a little income to ILU, but also enriches many people, and can also enhance you as a professional to share your skills. So kindly do reach out to Dr. Kitawi, let him know that I have a short course that I'd like and I have to share some experiences. We'll be able to share you that, and uh, that's a way that you can both benefit ILU, bless ILU, but also you'll be able to share your experience with many more people. Uh, we are also trying to make sure that we have more research collaborations with churches and other groups. A lot of university researchers are still on the shelf. That's the truth. You know, if students graduate, but that research stays somewhere on a shelf, we want to go beyond that by having research that is utilized in society. So we are looking for collaborations. If your church is desiring to have a, some research opportunity and, uh, and things like that, it would be good to um, maybe let, let us know that I think we would like to recite this aspect of ministry. We've been struggling with this aspect of ministry. So that, that research, then you will know, find a student who may be interested in that uh, or, or organization or community or extended family, whatever the issue may be. We'll find a student who may be interested in that and connect you so that that research, then you know, they will give you the results. Maybe you may also be able to sponsor them a bit, you know, in their research that they can do quality work. We are very, very much against researches or, or, or thesis from River Road. I hope none of you graduated with that. <laughs> you know, we don't want that. We want people to do credible research. And one of the issues is if they know that this research is going to be utilized. It's not just for the sake of passing an exam and then keeping it on the shelf. So we are seeking to do quality work and so on. So there'll be those opportunities. Another one I'll mention is missions, and uh, you'll be hearing about that later and so on. But whatever we do, there's a reminder that we seek to develop leaders of integrity for Africa's holistic transformation. That's our desire, that wherever we are, we'll collaborate with you to be able to develop leaders of integrity for Africa's holistic transformation. One of the challenges right now is uh, for many of you who are in the church sector is that, we, you know, it is say that a lot of the young people are leaving the church, even here in Kenya, mostly because they feel the church is irrelevant. The church is speaking all these spiritual things, but then the real world where they are, they are struggling with pornography, they are struggling with, now LGBTQ has come into the picture, uh, issues of uh, joblessness or whatever, they don't, and they don't feel that the messages answer the real issue. We want to bridge that gap by having a church that is relevant, a church that is connected to the issues and addressing those issues. In fact, I'll be sharing an opportunity that we'll be inviting you to shortly. Our academic programs, many of you would remember them. We now have the PhD programs for those of you who did a master's. I think majority of you, because for a long, long time, NIST and later ILE was a master's institution. We now have a PhD program in leadership. We are actually admitting right now for a new cohort uh, in, uh, you know, that will be starting in the month of May. So there's still a bit of window for those of you who may be interested in PhD in, in, in leadership. And then theology, we hope maybe we can start a new cohort in September. Uh, we are trying to help those who have, you know, there are people who have, uh, of course, not been able to finish. We are helping them to do that. One has already graduated.
graduated in leadership, and the others are on their way towards uh, completion in both PhD leadership and PhD theology or theological studies. The master's programs, I think, are familiar, the bachelor's programs. Uh, for the bachelor's programs, maybe I can just expand because some of you may, may not have been here when we started the bachelor, bachelor's in leadership and management. It has several strands in case some of you have children or relatives interested in marketing, business administration, uh, Christian ministries leadership, organizational development, all those are different strands in the bachelor's in leadership and management. The PG program in leadership has got four strands as well. Uh, it has uh, educational studies for those of you who are in educational institutions, it has in education and its role in leadership, uh, Christian ministries leadership, public governance, devolution and counties and or even national government. And then we also have a, a track on um, corporate leadership for those in business and corporate organizations and so on. We have the diploma programs and certificate programs. We have quite a few others that we are hoping to start this year. We are working currently on some uh, programs in ICT, early childhood education, women in leadership, and also spouses of ministers. Um, you know, many times when you are, you know, those of you who are pastors are familiar with this, there's an expectation placed on your spouse because they're the spouse of a minister <laughs> or a pastor. You know, even though they don't work for the church, they don't have necessary training, people expect the, 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 the spouse of the minister should play a role. And sometimes that's a bit of a frustration because then they don't know what to do and they don't feel equipped for it. So we want to bring back many of us who have this program before as a wise program, because at that point in time, of course, majority of the ministers were men, but uh, we are bringing back now our spouses program because of course we have both the men and women uh, who are in ministry. The short courses are many, you may not be able to read this, don't worry. Uh, we'll give you a brochure, I believe, uh, with all the short the courses. And the short courses, these are just samples. There may be others that are among you, that you are coming from your experience. You are interested in onboarding them, as we said. And you can offer that short course, as I said, through our Transforming Leadership Center. We'll market together, and then the profit is shared at an agreed rate. Very briefly about our strategic plan, where we are trying to go to. We are in the third year of our strategic plan, which we launched during COVID in 2020. And our desire is to consolidate the right culture. Of course, a Christian culture and you know, the right organizational culture, which we feel by God's grace, we've made some progress in that area, especially this year. And then enhance the capacity. So we are gonna look at capacity issues, faculty, uh, infrastructure in Kitengela, another technology. We are working on those things. To become a university of choice, where of course uh, people would want to come, but that not just so that we will become a big and well-known university, but also that we will be able to ignite change movements in Africa and the world. And as we talk about this holistic transformation, our desire is that uh, you and many others that will come through ILU will be change agents wherever you are. So it has four main themes. I'll not, uh, uh, that was the last one. We are currently working on this particular objective, uh, which is to become world class in our teaching, learning, scholarly research dissemination of contextual knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values to enhance institutional development and stakeholder experience by June 30. So we are currently in this space where we are working on that one. Uh, but uh, because of time, allow me not to go through the rest of it. I'll share it with you. Just to give you a feel from last year, I just want to give you a snapshot of how God is working. And last year, our theme uh, was based on Isaiah uh, 60. We tried to pick an annual theme every year. I'll share with you the one for 2023. So we were invited by EAK, the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya, to support their efforts uh, in, uh, with ministers. So it was, um, I was privileged to be among a lot of Christian bishops and ministers um, and to try and help them think through the issues and the challenges of the church in the country. Then we've also trained the Kenya Christian Professionals uh, Forum Board, uh, partnered with the Christian Alliance and Hope Media. Uh, this was just in preparation for elections. This is a very interesting opportunity. We were preparing uh, to do something. In fact, the council, our council had told us, you know, we are a leadership university and we teach governance. You know, what are we doing for elections? And we were beginning to prepare. Then God spoke with Peter Deng, who is based in these days in Kisumu. Uh, some of you know him. And uh, he just called me up. We had, haven't known one another very much. And he said, I'm wondering whether ILU would be interested in doing something on elections. And uh, so with him, he brought through you know, the media station. His wife is work at Hope Media. She you knows both radio and TV broadcast. We're able to do it live from here and uh, to help the country. You know, many of you possibly participated in hearing about that. Then, of course, we continue to do a lot of efforts in many, many churches on good governance and elections and so on. We actually hosted the Kilimani MCA betting session right here for this community as part of our responsibility to this community. 
Uh, then we also had a mission to uh, ill kill it or to talk a bit about missions. We have one more opportunity coming up very soon in the month of May. And then also uh, see we and uh, Mr. this is a bit of a prayer issue. And uh, because we knew we hadn't met one condition, which was the building of Kitengela. When I joined in 2019, one of the tasks that also told me is uh, Kitengela must be built up, you know, by the time 2021 comes, you know, because we have only two years to lapse our letter of interim authority. So by the grace of God, we had not quite built up fully, but we had started the process. And because of COVID and so on, CUE we were very understanding and the Ministry of Education. So our uh, left interim authority was extended for another four years, uh, effective uh, you know, last year. So we have until 2026, but we believe by then we should have finished Kitengela and met. That's one of the last remaining options, you know, issues for the charter. And we want to be able to do that. That's why Kitengela is very, very important uh, for us. And then uh, I want to mention about this election losers event, you know, of people who did do well. Or like they say, nobody loses, but the votes are not enough. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, for those uh, whose votes were not enough, you know, we put up this event and we were very encouraged to see over 400 registrations. One of those people who actually joined that event is a neighbor who lives in a, this court. She says she has been unable to ILU for many years, but for the first time, she felt ILU cared about her. She actually joined us there this year as a student in, in January. So, so just you never know how God uses these things. And of course, some of you may have graduated. Two quick things that are, are becoming kind of our niche. In 2021, um, no, 2022, no, 2021, uh, this story came out about this Matatu driver, if you remember, who found this uh, student to the uh, laptop and a uh, 20,000 shillings. You may remember that story, it was in the social media. So one of our council members you know, picked it up. I had not seen it myself. And he said, uh, Tim, this is, this is what ILU stands for. And this Matatu driver, an ordinary citizen, is demonstrating that it's possible to live with integrity. Why don't we do something for him? The father even sent me some money and said, let's do something for him. And uh, thank God for Mr. Nyamboki. He's very committed to, to ILU and his vision. And so I would reach out for, to him. We were able to connect with him through Dr. Jenga and so on. We invited him here. So this was actually right outside here, at our, you know, the, the loan out here, where we came. We gave him a small award. But as we were preparing, we felt we can do the award. It will so, soon be forgotten anyway. Why don't we do, do a bit more? So we asked him for his permission. And so we set up an integrity scholarship and endowment fund using his name, it's Basilio Kimani. You don't he comes from that part of the country where we don't think people have a lot of integrity with money. <laughs> so there are exemptions. <laughs> And Basilio, you know, so that many years from now, we want people to be able to ask, who is this Basilio? And we'll say he was a ordinary Kenyan who lived with integrity. But also, you know, he would have taken, of course, the 20,000 shillings. Maybe the laptop is like 30,000 or 20,000. But by God's grace, uh, we are trying to raise a fund that will now be able to issue scholarships. And we have promised that the first one will be to one of his children worth 600,000 shillings. So, and the message there is to say that integrity pays long term. It is not easy to be a person of integrity. I'm sure you know that in your own sector. But integrity always pays better in the long term. So it helps to be a person of integrity, um, you know, and, and, and so on. So that fund is still open. And we are going to raise funds. We've got, you know, one commitment of about a million shillings. We want to, go, of course, go a lot further. So if the Lord leads you to that, or you may know people who may want to invest in this kind of fund, please do connect us with them. But last year, again, um, another story was sent to us. Now, people have known that we do this, so somehow whenever these things can happen, you know, I get uh, sent this information. This is the uh, police constable, Anne Waigua. Anne was the one who found the 20,000 US dollars. Now, this is, you know, big money now. This is like 2.4 million last year at Wilson Airport. You remember that story about tourists who forgot the bag? And they had to work so hard to find this tourist. And, uh, you know, to cut a long story short, so, so you know, Anne, again, you know, people felt we should do something for her. We were able to connect with her. And this was during our graduation last year. Uh, Dr. Guido Moriyuki was our guest. This is Justice Mosinga, he's our chair of the Board of Trustees, giving her an award. But also we felt, again, the award is good, but it's very short term. Why don't you do something a bit more for her? So we raised some funds uh, so that she is able, right now, we have raised up to, you know, where she could start because of her previous education is a certificate program. And uh, right now she's actually enrolled in January. She is our student in the certificate program. And, uh, we have plans as well to take her through to the diploma. 
with a bit more support, we take her all the way out. And we want to transform her life. And it just shows that integrity is maybe costly, but it's always worth it and so on. So anyway, so that's a little bit about ILU. These are just some facts and figures. I'll not take a lot of time on all of them, uh, but uh, so far by God's grace, among you and others, uh, we have about 1,571 from the academic programs. But because ILU has always been involved in training churches and other organizations, we estimate conservatively that uh, by God's grace, over 54,000 have been touched through the short courses. So you can see, of course, we can do a lot more that way. And uh, we were also, by God's grace, again, COVID was, of course, a difficult time. Uh, came in, of course, some of you, you know, we were struggling a bit, quite a bit financially mm -hmm. and so on. But by God's grace, we've been able to go on for three years. And because of the help of many of you who have taught pro bono and other ways that God has blessed us, other gifts, we've been able to operate within budget over the last three years and uh, not go into debt, which is not a, in, a small thing for many universities, Professor Combo will tell you, even among the big universities and so on. Increasing the number of students, um, then pro bono faculty. We have some now new faculty in progress. Moses, who is joining us from Nigeria, is going to be, you know, we are hoping he'll be one of our faculty members as he joins the PhD program in leadership and others. And uh, then, of course, uh, the remote library teaching and so on. So through the technology now, uh, people can access, those who are teaching faculty and students can access our library resources now online. And of course, we have a learning management system as well, which God gave us from 2010. So we are able to now promote online teaching and learning. And uh, that, of course, also helps us both to be able to reach uh, more people, but even our faculty as well. We have students who are taught by people from around the world, uh, including Ukraine, uh, by the grace of God, and so on. Then Kitangela, of course, we've been able to raise some funds, but some of us still needs to come in in cash, but uh, we've been able to do the first phase. I'll talk a bit more about that. Then, of course, more staff uh, serve, serving sacrificially. Uh, you know, as either self or supported missionaries. And uh, then, of course, again, building that culture of performance and, uh, and so on. So 2023, I'm trying to come to where we are now. This is our theme verse. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stick. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Um, Isaiah 54, verse 2 and 3. This is our theme for this year. And how we generate our theme verse is that we actually encourage all the staff to pray at the beginning of the year. And we listen to different ones of us. We work together collaboratively until we can find a, a theme that we think covers all the other scriptures that God has spoken to us about. So that's how we came up with Isaiah 54. And so we believe that God uh, wants us to stretch this year. He wants us to enlarge both maybe in, in quality, in quantity, and uh, maybe in other ways. He wants us to stretch what we've been doing, not to hold back. So we want to release ourselves. And that's partly why we have called you, because we believe that through you, we can also extend what God has given to us. We believe it's most needed in the country. To lengthen our cords, to strengthen the stakes. So we need to build capacity there. I see the need for capacity there. So, you know, so that we can be able to stretch to go further. And that by his promise, we'll go to the left and to the right. And our descendants, that's now those that we even train, those we multiply through, that will be able to touch nations around the world, uh, even those that are desolate. And they are, it is are becoming desolate now, isn't it? When you look through Europe, because they are no longer giving children back to children, they are becoming desolate cities, isn't it? So Africans will go there to help. We, we know how to help, isn't it? <laughs> to repopulate Europe and other places. But hopefully they also go as you know, ambassadors of Christ to make a difference there. So we see some of those things already happening. Once the culture I mentioned, the cohort three, construction, Tengela, we are hoping to resume. We have run out of the funds that we raised raise at first, but uh, we believe God is helping us to work through that. As I mentioned about the certificate and diploma programs, and then continue to settle some of our debts and moving towards financial sustainability. So there's our outlook for this year. We've already, of course, covered two or three months. Capacity building, we began that. Then the church leaders consultations. And then um, we are also working on, of course, uh, identifying urgent faculty. We try to begin early. So we already have the faculty now for May. Uh, we'll soon begin to look for faculty for whatever. And God provides through many of you. In fact, for now, because our financial situation is still a little uh, dicey, we have continued to look for pro bono faculty. And that's one of the things that surprised me because when I came here, I had refused to come here. Let me maybe, maybe, maybe be a little honest here. I had been an urgent faculty here for 11 years. 
and I taught here pro bono. Uh, so what I ask others to do is something I've also done uh, for many years. <laughs> and uh, when the, the council identified me and asked me to, uh, to consider, um, I knew the state of ILU. My wife, Mary, has been here for many years, and I knew it was not in a very healthy place. And so I kept telling the Lord, why are you giving me, th me this? I believe this is one of my last assignments in life, you know, in terms of before I maybe take, I'll take it easier. And I was saying, why, don't you, why are you giving a task that I cannot succeed? You know, uh, most of the other tasks that I've, that I've done by the grace of God have succeeded. And God kept, kept saying, this is what I want you to do. And one of the things, therefore, at some point, I, you know, the council and others were involved, I told them, okay, I may consider if you can put on, on the table 400 million shillings, because I think that's what I do needs to become a thriving institution. And of course, you know the answer. We are a faith ministry. <laughs> we don't have that kind of money, but uh, we believe in God. <laughs> anyway, to cut a long story short, you know, um, eventually the Lord spoke to me. You know, the book of Judges chapter 6. I show that verse because I wanted to share in the same spirit. Judges 6 verse 14. There's a calling of Gideon. Gideon, like myself, was hesitant, if you remember, you know, and God wanted to, you know, you remember the, Lord, the, the angel saying, you might a man of valor. It's like he's looking behind and asking, who are you talking about? You know, I come from the least tribe and the smallest clan and all of that. It's, no, it's not me. Uh, but the Lord said, you know, you might a man of valor. Um, you know, I wanted to go. And the Judges 6, 14 specifically says, go in the strength you have. To save Israel, because in my case, was highly you, out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? When the Lord used that verse and it kind of became clear to me, I stopped fighting. Because God said, go in the strength that you have. What do you have? And then, am I not sending you? And so the Lord asked, if, I, if you have me, what is 400 million shillings to me, isn't it? And so I came by faith. <laughs> that will sort out uh, whatever needs to be sorted out. That the Lord will provide that. And so... I had no idea about, I've never had, I'm not a university that runs on pro bono faculty. But I remember when I was struggling, because as soon as I came, you know, many people came, some of you maybe owed a few debts, we are trying to sort out everything. But I remember many people coming in, they hear there's a new VC, oh, I'm owed money from 2015, I've never been paid. And of course, it's very painful. And I thought, Lord, do I put more people through this? And so during that December, I came in November 2019, so December 2019, I asked the Lord, you know, what do we do about this lecturer's issue? We need quality lecturers. We cannot compromise the standards like some universities do, but we don't have the money. And the Lord reminded me, go in the strength that you have. So I asked the Lord, what do I have? I thought I've been in ministry, you know, now for 34 years, that I maybe it was 30, 31 years. And I've trained many people, I've discipled many people, and many of them are, you know, have got higher degrees. So, so I wrote a message, some of you maybe, maybe received it. And I asked you, would you teach for ILU? It's a great institution. I've come because I believe in the vision of ILU, but you don't have money. So we will not be able to pay you. But we will also not take advantage of you, like I'll share shortly, who we'll equip you on how to integrate faith and your subject area. But cut a long story short, 70 people responded to say they were going to come and teach for ILU to ILU for free. So if you calculate that, I'm not sure how much the money is. <laughs> Lots of money. So God had his own way of meeting the 400 million, but not by giving us cash. <laughs> we'll share with you a few number, a number, a number of other things. I knew that we needed people at the higher levels. We have poor caliber and so on. And again, I asked the Lord, what do we do about that? I'll need some good DVCs to work with. Dr. Beatrice Amati Jenga here, I had met her when she was working for African Union, she was the director of education for all of Africa. And I was privileged to train her in my, my previous role. And uh, I got to know about the time when she retired from that role. And I asked her whether she, would come, she could come and join us. I told her again, we can't afford you. <laughs> but uh, if the Lord would be leading you to do that. And she prayerfully considered, so she gives her services to ILU pro bono. And so the quality, the networks that we can access through her would never have been able to afford. I could say the same for Dr. Peter Mutua, who is there at the DBC. It's now, you know, later on, council said, okay, we must meet at least the minimal cost of tra transport and so on. But uh, I'm so blessed to be here. This is God's institution. I just wanted to let you know that God is at work here. Yeah. I wanted to be a part of it. 
and uh, because that's how come I'm excited to be a part of it here. And that's why I work with all my heart, because I know God brought me here. And uh, I believe by his grace, we'll be able to go on. So anyway, so this is our plan for the year. I just wanted to mention about the urgent faculty. So when you, I wanted to clarify that. Sometimes some of you wonder, how come I leave tax fees and so on? We are like the government of Kenya. About 70% of our money goes to clearing debts and other things, <laughs> other obligations that, of course, I found here that, unfortunately, I have to carry. But uh, we believe this is for a season. By God's grace, we've reduced our debt from about 65 million. I think the last time was 55, except for a loan we've had to take recently. That's why I wrote somewhere until recently because of uh, an urgent issue that we need to take care of. Uh, so we've been coming down in our debt, and I'm sure there's hope. The other things that council is working on are the trustees, uh, so I have their support uh, to be able to help the institution and so on. Next, next month, in the month of April, again, because of our connection with the EAK, they've asked us to solve one of the deepest challenges they feel they are having, which is discipleship. And uh, because of that, uh, we'll be having an event here with the Nairobi chapter of Nairobi County, uh, Evangelical Alliance of Kenya. We hope as once we get a model that works, we can help the churches in the country and so on. In the month of May, we'll be going to Cap Zero. Uh, this is, uh, I don't know, um, in, um, among the suburb people, uh, for a nation that, again, we encourage all of us uh, to, to be a part of it. Uh, who remembers the dates? Uh, it's May, the first week. First week of May. Anyway, starting May 1, I think that just that first week. And uh, you are welcome. We invite uh, alumni to come and re reignite their fire. Maybe <laughs> over time, of course, you go out there, you are you now struggling with other issues and so on. Uh, come and maybe be part of us. Uh, we, 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 this is important for us as a discipleship opportunity for the students. Because we promise to produce people of integrity, we know it doesn't just happen in the class. The class is very important. We have good faculty. We try to help them integrate the scriptures with their subject matter. But we know that it's important to spend personal time with them. We have the weekly mentorship times. Some of you remember that every Thursday, sorry, Tuesday. But that's not also enough. We want some face-to-face -face time because some of them are at a distance. So the first week of, uh, we'll be going to um, the support people uh, in uh, Cap Zero. And then we'll also be starting our cohort three uh, of the PhD program. Uh, June is some valuation uh, for, uh, for quality assurance issues purposes. July, we'll also start the review of our 10-year strategic plan. 10-year strategic plan is not a very good idea. Usually, most of us now are doing three to five. The reason why we did that is because uh, partly CV requires that long-term projection and so on. So we also agree that every three years, we'll also have a major revamp. So we'll be beginning there. We hope to relaunch our, the new one around October, so those three months. Then uh, prospective students, uh, launching of programs in Kretagela campus, we don't know yet. We are praying that God provides the resources. I'll show you the pictures and so on. And then our sponsor is Life Ministry. They'll be having the 50th anniversary in October. And also by that time, we'll be identifying the uh, agent faculty for January 24. And then uh, we, on November 18, uh, it's been, uh, the council of the push from June, uh, we are postponing for a few months to accommodate a few more students. It's when we hope to have our 38th graduation ceremony. And then our partners get together as well in December. So what are some of the current challenges? I thought it's important to also share with you. As uh, Dr. Susan said, we, we, there's nothing we hide here because whatever challenges are there, we own them together. And they are for all of us. So legal and financial issues, we still have a few. Uh, this year, especially for some reason, now people are getting a little impatient because if they think, ah, you know, at least it's coming back to life. So even those who are a little patient with some of their old deaths are saying, no, no, now I've waited a bit. And I think now you're doing okay. <laughs> so for whatever, whatever reason, they are feeling that the university is back to hell. So we are having quite a bit of that and uh, dealing with it. But uh, the Lord is helping us. And we are to dispose of many of them, of course, out of court and so on, and preventing them from going to court as well. And recruitment, it's uh, not going as quickly as we would have wanted, but uh, I want to thank God for Dr. Uh, for Susan. I said, doctor, doctor, it's coming. Coming. <laughs> so that is soon going to start her PhD. Uh, she was our best student in the mass program as uh, I graduated last year. And uh, she has joined us and recruitment. Did a, doing a very good job. This January, we had a very improved uh, recruitment. And we are trusting all that from there on our private sponsored students. You know, we are having a challenge of also government is not, no, not going to give us any more government sponsored students. But uh, we are not afraid. Uh, ILU has never been. Uh, based on government sponsored students, as you, as you know from your time, they're always privately sponsored. So we believe we will we'll be able to overcome that very soon. 
uh, courses, we are developing new courses. Of course, we are having a few government sponsor students, especially, and a few other private ones who are the younger generation, millennials, Generation Z. They need a lot more support. So we are still struggling to find a balance because for a long time, ILE was positioned to train mid-career people like yourselves. Now, when we get those 18-year-olds, they don't quite function the same way. <laughs> and they need a lot more parenting <laughs> that we are not prepared for because we used to train adults. So we are trying to find that balance. In fact, one of the years we have is to get a few counselors to support them because they have a lot of life issues. They are trying to figure out themselves. Many of them are here because of their parents. They don't care whether they are here or not, whether they fail or not. <laughs> so it's a new thing we have not dealt with before, but uh, if any of you can provide some support there, that's needed. Again, our campus, I mentioned, we need some 16.4 million shillings. Please pray for this. Uh, we have already done work to the foundation. I'll show you some pictures, but you need to get to the next level so that at least maybe we can begin to have some classes or available. And then we have currently about pledges of 15 million that are out there. And of course, the economic situation has not been good. These are people who pledged because they wanted to give, but they have not been able to redeem those pledges. Some are redeeming them and so on. So you can pray for that. And of course, staff needs, we always and needing more faculty, God is bringing to us. Yes, yesterday we were interviewing one who is again coming for a year uh, to serve uh, in a row. And uh, so we do need a new DVCAA, the Red House Quality Assurance and Research. If you think you are qualified for some of those roles, as I'm mentioning them, the student council, as I mentioned, and also ICT. Uh, we currently work with a consultant. And then, of course, working on long term sustainability. As I said, we don't want to be at the edge all the time. We want to get to the place where we are completely sustainable. How have we tried to, uh, how have alumni supported us? I wanted to thank you and share with you what others are doing. Agent faculty, of course, like you had, many of you have done that. Thank you very much. Now you know why it, we do this and how strategic it is to our long-term sustainability. You have really helped us to bounce back to life. And we get a campus. Many of you have been there. Uh, you have supported us with the fundraising that we've been doing or breakfast meetings. Some uh, alumni are actually even planning to host breakfast meetings for their friends who will be more than happy to work with you if you just say i think i have good enough networks like the lord telling me about my networks i can bring them together and uh, do a breakfast meeting where we can share the vision uh, it's not a high pressure event no 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 manipulation but just share the vision and hopefully they connect with the vision to support kitangela we believe that 6.4 million can be raised even just by those of us who are here today here and online if we could just open up our networks. So if the Lord again be prompting you to do that, please think about it. You can share with us at the end when you get a, a, a feedback form uh, to share with us how you can be a part of this. I wanted to especially appreciate one particular alumnus. Um, you know, he's an ordinary Kenyan, uh, not he's a Kenyan, no, he's not a Kenyan, but he's an ordinary person. He uh, has been one of our lecturers. And when we began this project of Kitangela, was very excited and pledged a million shillings. And I must say, I was also one thinking, I hope you understand a million. <laughs> but uh, by the grace of God, he began to redeem that one million shillings. You know, just said over time, he will work towards it. So God can use you, not just alone. And I remember being challenged myself because then I'm the carrier of the vision, so to speak. Uh, so I thought initially I would pledge one million shillings. And uh, by the grace of God, I can say, I think through my networks, not my, of course, or just my wife and I, but our networks and friends, We've been able to, to contribute and raise over 2.2 million for Kitangela. Mm -hmm. So all of you can do that. You can do something. I'm sharing this story not to focus on us, but to show, show you that again, just by capturing the vision and choosing to be a part of it, you can help make a difference. You can help us with the new students. I wanted to appreciate Reverend Elijah Kiyombe. He was a recruiting officer at some point. So the other day I was uh, with uh, Bishop Njuguna, who's not able to be here today, uh, Bishop Dr. Njuguna of the Little Church Langata. And he said, I came because of Reverend Kiyome, you know, you're in the same denomination. And uh, so you can see, and he himself said, he was also recruited other bishops who have come to be here. So you can see how God works, isn't it? So you never know that uh, recruitment is one area. Then short courses, I already mentioned those. Scholarship funds and donations. Uh, we've received computers, uh, we received a van, one of the vans that is here, books and other things <coughs> from some of our alumni. So God might use you. I'm sharing these as ideas of how you can bless your alma mater, ILU. Administration and consultancy, as I said again, you can help uh, serve in administration, maybe through your skills and so on, let us know. 
and maybe some consultancies as well. The university mission I mentioned, like the one of last year, and of course the one coming up. And staff again mentioned those opportunities in all our divisions. So this is Keith and Gela. These are the pictures of the images of what it will look like. We are currently working on this structure. It's a main administrative and academic building. We've done all the foundation. You see the next uh, picture. And uh, then eventually then later there'll be the others, a sports field that will work with the Kijedo County because what you can make it available to them and the community, uh, the housing for students, housing for staff uh, is a big project. Again, maybe another story of God's faithfulness. Of course, this land was purchased when many of you were here, 2007, and uh, it had stayed died off all these years. In fact, he was saying, now every time we come here, we are told you are going to build Kitengela. Now this time around, you must build. <laughs> because we had had the story that every time is always you know, you know, in planning stage. So when we did this, uh, first of all, it had an issue with uh, it's one of those things that needed millions of shillings. Because there was an old contract that had gone wrong, uh, had many mistakes, I can't go into the details. And um, when eventually I reached out to the, to the architect, he told me he knew about another one that had gone legal. And he said, I can go to court. And I know I'll get more, at least 200 million shillings from my LU. That is a godly man. Eventually we talked. I still remember that meeting just because that's one of the things that may, was making me very scared. I knew about Kitagela needing that and I knew there was a legal issue because we had not honored some of our commitments. Cut a long story short, he, was, he agreed to cancel that old contract at no cost to ILU so long as we retain him as the architect for the project. And today that's how come we have this project going on. So God has been faithful. You know, he, when God tells you to go, and even if there is no money, just go. <laughs> he knows how he sort out the financials and so on. And uh, so the projects go. So when he did the drawings and we submitted them to Kajero County, we needed 10 million shillings uh, to just approve the buildings. You know that usually the county has to approve the buildings. Of course, we don't have, we don't, we don't write with that kind of money. <laughs> so again, uh, Dr. Jenga and I and others, you know, thought together, what do we do? So we went to the governor of Kajiado County, and we asked him first of all to waive that, again, because they're bringing development to the county and opportunities for employment and all of that. And uh, he said, no, nobody had actually asked him to do that. I never asked you know, for that kind of thing, you know, at least and so on. But I said, no, we, we are a bit unique. <laughs> so anyway, eventually he, he agreed. But, you know, just God allowed us to connect with him. It was our first meeting to get to the county assembly. But because of the way Kenyans operate, the county assembly members, the MCAs thought we must have given the, the governor something. That's how come he's wanting us to waive this thing and so on, so that he eats quietly. You know, and some of them would really call me and say, how much have you given the governor? I told them, no, you're not giving them any money. Because they couldn't understand how he would agree to, to waive for something where he has no personal interest. You know, that's the way, unfortunately, my now is poisoned. And um, by the grace of God, you know, the county assembly did not waive the 100%, but they waived 60%. So six million shillings was provided that way. The four million that remained with you didn't have it. So I went, we went back and said, Governor, thank you for what you've done. We don't have four million, but we are not poor. We have very good leadership training that you can give to your county staff. And by the grace of God, he told me, okay, we'll give you a test case. If my heads of departments and directors agree, then we can work on this partnership. If they don't accept it, then we cannot work, you have to pay. By the grace of God, when we offered the first uh, level of round of training, Dr. Kita, we helped facilitate that. And others, you know, we got some of our alumni again, some of our, you know, our best who come, and uh, they accepted the training. So now we are in a process of not only helping clear the 4 million, but they've actually said they'll even now begin to pay us for the other county staff to be trained through the same process. So we need to get back to this. So God is at work. This is his institution. He takes care of it. And we are just excited to be, to be able to see him at work. So this is the construction a bit earlier when we have begun the foundation of the columns. Then we did the, the filling there. Then of course, we've also now already done the slab for the path for the, for the ground floor or across that building I showed you. Uh, that's as far as we've been able to go. Let me share a little bit about our philosophy of partnership because I'd like to invite you to partnership. I know I've taken a bit of time. I'm sorry, I'm going to be finishing soon. Our philosophy of partnership is based on this is in the book of Acts chapter three, verse six, where Peter, of course, answered, uh, Peter and John answering the beggar at the, at the temple, silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of 
that's authority and power of Jesus Christ, the, the, the Nazarene, begin now to walk um, and go on walking. That's from Hasiah chapter three in the Amplified uh, Version. But I highlight that the bold part is my own highlight because that's our commitment to you. We've invited you. And this, we are very clear in our minds. We want you to be more blessed by ILU than you bless ILU. I hope you already feel blessed by ILU. <laughs> but we'd like to bless you some more. And this is, so this is not manipulation. I'm very clear in my own heart and mind that, uh, in fact, I went, when I went to Kajiado County, some of them, you know, CECs around the governor said, hey, you people, you've gotten too, too good a deal. Nobody gets this. I said, no, no, no. You are going to be more blessed than we are. And when we did the first training and, and so on, the county began to change. They began to see the county public service change. Some of them came back to me and said, hey, what you told us is true. Now we are blessed more than you are. And so on. So that's our philosophy. We believe that being small does not mean we cannot be a place of blessing. You know, we can be, you know, a wellspring that will bless this nation and the continent of Africa. So whatever we have, whatever I've shared so far, that if you, this may be of interest to me in my ministry, whatever, please talk to us because we'd like to bless you with it. And so that you can become a blessing to others by the grace of God. How are we seeking to support you as alumni? A few quick ones. A judge faculty, we already mentioned that. Those who have been teaching at least three classes, this uh, January we offered them because we are now having some PhD classes in research. We give them an opportunity, those who are taught at least three to, to come for free uh, because we want to be a blessing. We are serious about this thing of being a blessing to others. And so there are some people who took advantage and they are going through the PhD research classes. Uh, whether they have already done PhD and they're doing it for refresher or they've never done, they are doing that. And then academic ranking, we just pass a policy at the Senate level and it's gone to one of the committees of council. We hope in April it will be approved where we can rank our adjunct faculty. Not many universities do that. But I do is called to be special, I believe by the grace of God. So we will be ranking those who have taught for us. Of course, there's a period of time. It can be, you just teach one course, now rank me. <laughs> yeah, we are looking at about three, those who teach for three years. We believe that they can be ranked. Ranking is a big issue in many public universities. It's actually a political issue. Many times people bribe to be ranked. You don't have to do that entirely. We believe we can be a blessing in that way. Those are some of the ways we want to bless those who do it as adjunct faculty. So we're not type of a type to take advantage. Um, it's only that we are using what we have <laughs> and what one of the things we have is academic ranking. New students, you may remember that, of course, we give back a commission. So those of you who help recruit, you can ask for the commission unless you choose to bless ILU with it of the first term fees or first trimester fees. If you recruit any new students, let uh, Susan know, we'll be able to do that. That's part of our being able to, because you bless us with students, we can also be a blessing to you. And the short course and consultancies we mentioned in many areas, Humanitarian donations. This is not something we do very often. We raise some for um, the people allow, around Oloika. We have a little bit of money. We we'll still need to give it because even though the rains have come, I know it will take a while for them to get the food. But also recently we learned about uh, one of our alumni, Robert Balusi, is in Malawi. He's a missionary to Malawi. And some of you have seen the videos about the drowning of many, many people and so on. Uh, four villages being washed off by the rains. They're having very, very serious cyclones there. So just this week, we launched uh, an effort. If you would like to be a part of it, you can take a picture of that. And maybe just send a gift. Uh, you know, it's an m -Pesa number. You'll be able, they'll be able to change that and bless the people of Malawi. The university measures to Cap Zero, as I mentioned, in May, the first week of May. Public lectures, of course, we invite you uh, to various issues. I want to thank uh, Reverend Waema. He helped us to get the lecturers, uh, the person who gave the lecture for this year. And we will be doing more in various areas of interest, again, uh, the, the volunteer opportunities are there, as I mentioned. Uh, so there's an opportunity for you in case maybe you are in between transitions or have retired and still want to contribute something to society, and you offer as an opportunity. Uh, recommendations for boards and other opportunities. The other day we were approached by one of the county TVETs and uh, asked you, a leadership school, can you recommend some good people for our board? And we are grateful to God that we are beginning to get into that space where people are beginning to identify ILU. So we were able to reach out, especially to those of you who are in the governance area, because that's what they were looking for. We gave some names, and uh, not every one of them was contacted, but they contacted a few and got their CVs, and so on. We believe that soon they'll be appointed. So we would like to be a blessing to you. As I said, we are serious about this thing of blessing you. It's not just uh, by name. So if you can be able to serve in those boards, because we believe you are people of integrity, you can be able to bless our country and so on. Then I mentioned the, the podcast. It's a very new idea. 
I can just discuss it yesterday, but uh, we seem to be getting uh, some funding for it. We discussed in the morning and afternoon, I got an email saying, we are looking to how we can maybe support ILU in some areas of technology and experimental theology and so on. So we thought that was God's answer. And so we want to start a podcast. A podcast is where we, you know, we are able to share, um, you know, younger people are no longer watching TV. TV is going to soon be outdated uh, with all its uh, <laughs> revenues and so on. But it's not necessarily the technology of the future. Because young people, as well, don't want to sit there, you know, somebody else selecting news. They want to go and select the news themselves. So a podcast, you know, is better because then you can be very targeted at that audience. And so we want to be able to be able to help the church to answer life's questions. Because that's the issue they're saying, that uh, the church today is not answering our real questions. You know, yes, you are teaching all these nice spiritual things, but they're not our issues. So we want to connect those issues together. And so we'll be inviting some of you to come and maybe speak on a certain topic that we, you know, you are comfortable with and so on, but helping us to have an ongoing podcast that can be in our place. And we hope that over, over time, there'll be a voice of reason, a voice from the scriptures, answering life's questions and so on. There could be others. Allow me to stop here because of time. I could go on and on, but uh, because of time, I think I've done as much as one day can take. So let me see whether there, there are a few responses. I know I've said many, many things. But uh, might there be one or two things you might want to respond to? We can listen to those of you who are here, those of you who are online. Thank you for staying put there and uh, listening. Uh, would there be any of you who would like to give a very quick response, to make it short and targeted? And then uh, we will come in, be coming to close in a few minutes. We requested to have you on here until 10. I'm sorry we have gone over, overboard a little bit. We'll be finishing very soon. Any quick responses before I come to one last issue that you'd like us to consider? Any of you? Maybe it's a suggestion that we have not thought about, an area that we can be a blessing to you. Uh, help us, we're happy to learn and work together. Or maybe something else that uh, you think is an opportunity for our living society that we maybe have not explored. We'll be happy to do that. Any of you will give maybe a few opportunities. Yes, uh, Dr. Susan, you can just say it from there, then I'll, I'll amplify from here. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Susan. So uh, for the sake of those of you online, Dr. Susan, one of our uh, former lecturers here and uh, program leaders is mentioning about the, the strategicness of working with alumni as a judge and faculty, uh, as we are doing and uh, the need to continue doing that some more. Thank you very much. One or two more? Okay, Dr. Mbogo. Uh, 
so that while you will not be much exposed, and you will not be like one of the human beings who is walking on the I should have actually let you come here, so I don't have to repeat, but for the sake of the online audience, uh, Dr. Stephen Bogo uh, was sharing about the idea of us working with actual uh, alumni and others from the local community joining with us at Kitengela to actually provide actual labor as, as a team building exercise. And just to encourage you that last year, December 10, we decided to plant trees. The area, if you, those of you who have been there, the place is very dry and not, no, almost not, 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 not many trees in the area. And we felt that one of the things we need to green that I need to commend Dr. Jenga for her passion in that area. Uh, she's an, an environmental area, an environmental uh, specialist. And uh, we were able to work with the local community. We spent a whole day with them. We actually initially thought it would be a short time. So in fact, we had arranged for some lunch uh, for the staff. I actually invited alumni who could come. And we had even arranged a lunch in town. We could not even take that lunch because they took the whole day. And the local community was with us the whole day. So there was a bit of that feeling we can do a bit more. So I think we'll think about another project that we can, we can do together. Kindly do come on, invite you. We'd we'll like to work together and uh, maybe others that you can bring and so on. Yeah, thank you very much. Because of time, and we'd like to honor that, maybe those of you who want to start, uh, hang around a little bit afterwards, we are not in a hurry, but these are some areas of how you can partner with us. Maybe the previous slide talks about your leadership. You can invest your leadership in your, your partnership with IMU influence again through your networks so on uh, you know you can give funds whatever ways for the various areas or your expertise as i've mentioned in various areas uh, so some of the outstanding ones uh, financially is kitengela or as i said uh, 3.4 million that we need and uh, it costs about 35 uh, 000 shillings to build a square meter so just to give you a graphic feature but if you contribute that then you really build us you know you can come back and tell your children and grandchildren, this square meter belongs to us <laughs> because you contributed something. And these are the scholarship funds, as I said again, with uh, commitments of about a million shillings. We hope that, uh, sorry, this is 2023, about uh, 5 million. So, you know, we hope we can strengthen that as we continue. And we use these funds not only for the scholarships, but also to bring back integrity in different sectors, the Matapu sector, border, border, youth business, police, whatever sector. Then the educational scholarships as well. Uh, those of you who may want to do that or may know people can do that, we are always happy because our students, of course, always will have needs that can be met. Uh, these are our details in case you'd like to take a picture of that um, so that you know you go away and the Lord speaks to you about helping in any area. There's um, our Pesa pay bill, the account uh, is the name of the International Ship University checks and so on, uh, but we'll also be happy to send that to you. Uh, if you need it at any time, uh, through Pauline, who has been in touch with many of you, you'll be able to get that information. So this is an ongoing discussion. We are not finishing yet, but be thinking about how can we serve you better and how can you also partner with us? We will not discuss it now because of time, but let's keep the conversation going. I uh, want to thank you very much. I think if there's a feedback form, yes, uh, yes, yes, let it come quickly. You can share with them uh, so that I uh, will be coming to a close now. Thank you, I'm done. Yeah, but yeah, the feedback and we wrap up. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, do you have that, that um, presentation slide deck that we did for resource mobilization? For Kitangela? Yeah. I, did, I do, but I'm asking you because of time. Okay. Because of the time, we can send it together, but I can show it to them. Yeah. 
Ini juga tulis pasca testimoni. Apologize to those of you online. There was a little hitch, but uh, we've been able to get back and we are just about to finish here. Yeah. So, thank you so much again. And we are always eager to, to hear from you, to hear your suggestions. I know you have some suggestions, and uh, if, if you can write, we'll appreciate that. Um, and, and we also need help in reaching more of you. So I think one of you during the breakfast break, if you can call the beginning a break, <laughs> mentioned starting WhatsApp groups for your, for, for your years. That would be so useful for us because we, 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 do have, we do have names and numbers, but those numbers, it's like they were changed. So when we call, we don't reach the people we are we are trying to 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 reach. So if if you can volunteer to organize your your years into WhatsApp groups, and then I don't know if, if we will then have to join all those groups. <laughs> we are we'd be happy to do that because you know you are that important um, to us. So I'd like to ask if there is anybody with something you'd like to say that's encouraging as we wind down and also as you fill the forms, maybe you have a question on the forms, how to fill it. We also have a, um, a form that is blank. Uh, if you know of someone from your year or any other year that you are sure has not had, uh, did not hear about this breakfast. You know how you know somebody that's oh, I'm so they would have come definitely if you had invited them. You know some people like that. So if, if you can put their name and number, and uh, maybe you can add your name at the side so that we'll tell them. So and so is the one who gave us your your contact. Yes, please. <clears throat> Yes. 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 Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, yes
Yes, we do remind us every month, uh, the last week of the month. Is this the last week of the month? So if, if you're a pledger, expect to hear from us. And if you're a pledger and you're not hearing from us, it means maybe we are writing your email wrong and or, or, or even your phone number. So please, there, there's that page. We have the papers that you can take around where you, you write your correct name and number. We are following up and we are trusting by the grace of God um, that the, the, the pledgers will be blessed to be a blessing uh, concerning this, this project. Yes, and now with alumni, yes, um, there, there was a time we were discussing with a few alumni and they had ideas. I think one of them is, is here. They, they had ideas on organizing um, events for, for mobilizing resources. I think that there, there was an idea about golf. Uh, somebody else had spoken about um, biking or, 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 um, or, or walking. So if you have those ideas, we'll be happy to, to work with you to organize them to, in order to mobilize resources. And if now you as alumni say, you know, we can uh, reach out to our networks uh, for a day in September or a day in August for a, a, a fundraising drive, we will be very happy to continue working on that. We also have family stewardship weekend. We, we, we have been having them regularly, Family Stewardship Weekend, where, where we have Fridays, Saturday, Friday and Saturday. Uh, we meet together, it was during COVID, so we were meeting online. Uh, we, we encourage one another about um, biblical stewardship and then uh, encourage uh, those who have been blessed to be a blessing. We, we present ILU as one of those uh, areas in which you, you, you can do God's work by contributing, knowing what we stand for and, and the kind of difference that, that we are making. Yes, sir. Okay. I forgot a very important thing. You have just reminded me. As you spoke, um, we of course, some of you are aware, so this is an open secret, We've had a challenge with an alumni association, ILU alumni association. It was launched some years ago. And just before I came, there were some misunderstandings uh, between issues to do with the council. Uh, some of you know the details. I'm not maybe going to all the details. I think one of the members had been there, they were removed, they were not happy. And now the space of the fight became the alumni association. So when I came, some of the court cases were by our own alumni trying to go to court, I think about Kitengela, about other things. And uh, by, by the grace of God, all of that is behind us. We were able to resolve those out of court. It never became a court matter. But uh, because of that, we have not been able to collaborate well with the registered alumni association. I believe maybe safely that uh, they are, the term of those who are in office has lapsed because the term is for a season and need to be re-elected, we want to relaunch the Alumni Association. Uh, if we are able to get the old registration records, we'll use that. If they don't give it like happens sometimes, we'll get another one. There is no shortage of what we can do. <laughs> Nobody can hold ILU ransom, isn't it? So we'll be able to relaunch the Alumni Association. We want Part of what I to write, for those of you who are alumni, because you need to be an alumnus for this one, if you'd like to be a part of a small steering group, we will reach out in love to those who have been there before and try to find, to mediate, make sure that we can find a way to get that old registration. But by chance, it doesn't, we don't get it, we'll find another way. So we will not be stopped in this effort. But kind of if you're an alumnus and you'd like to be a part of that steering team to be on the alumni association, I wanted to share this so that you can indicate that on your form. So just indicate that, uh, yes, I'll be willing to do that. We'll get a small core group. And that way now we'll be able to answer Reverend Kiyome better because you, you yourselves will be the ones organizing. And of course, we'll just be providing you with support. And so, so I just want to mention that, that we want to revive the alumni association this year by the grace of God. We decided to settle for us and settle other areas, but I think now we are ready for that step. So you'll be hearing from us about the alumni association. Thank you very much. Yes, sorry.
Thank you so much. Uh, before I call on Bishop, just in, in line with that, uh, there, there may be some of you maybe who had started some programs and did not complete. We are just, we are, we'd like to encourage you to come back, uh, speak to us. We know that um, we, the corporate, we have made some mistakes and we, we are truly sorry about that. And we, we, we would like to make it right by you, by our alumni. So please speak to us, write to us, if, even if you use the general info. Info at ILU, I answer personally. Uh, VC at ILU goes directly to his office. Recruitment at ILU goes directly to, to Susan. Uh, which other one? Admissions also is in the registrar's office. So they, 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 they are not anonymous emails as such. They, they are actually answered directly by, by any one of us, specific ones of us. So please do not um, stay wondering and feeling sad and bad about it. We are willing and ready and by the grace of God able to do something about it now. Yes, the Bishop. I don't think I hesitate to. <laughs> Thank you very much. I believe our council will be very open. Of course, we are not allowed at management to make commitments at that level because of governance issues. We would need to have the council and the trustees. But I believe they'll be very open. We have actually talked about it. And if the rates are friendly, I think it will depend on the interest rate because I'm sure it will be, you know, there will be some return on that investment. But if the interest rate is acceptable, I believe our council and our trustees will be very open. That could be a big answer. We need that campus yesterday. The reason why, maybe I need to explain this. The reason why we cannot do more programs here. CUE, they came and accredited all our programs in 2020, November. So all our current programs are accredited. But they told us, see you next at Kitengela. <laughs> so they're not coming back here <laughs> to accredit more programs. <laughs> we need additional capacity. That's why Kitengela is so strategic, both for charter and for more programs. So that would be a big answer to our, to our need. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I can confirm this. We've been in touch with the governor. Um, he's the same one. He returned, so at least that's, that's stable. But now the challenge okay, is the CEC. I don't know whether you are aware that our old CEC, he has since been removed. In fact, there was an impeachment issue with the person that we were working with, the CEC for education. You know, those things happen in uh, public service, in politics. So, in fact, some of the two people that we had been working with. So we are kind of rebuilding that, those relationships, but the governor, we are in touch. But I called him so much as at some point he says, 
I'm sensing like you are not sure that we'll own our commitment. I want to reassure you I'm not changing. <laughs> so he has given us his yes. Sorry, sorry. Okay, from DRC, we can hear you, Mark Asobi. Find the mute, okay. <laughs> Mark is a, a recent graduate from DRC, so yeah, so, so we are working together. And thank you for the direction about the registry issues. We'll work with you and others to make sure that the association is back and able to play its role because it will provide a good and intermediary between the university and all the alumni. Yeah. Okay, any, any points from online? Um, Wanjiru says, thank you very much. You can read it there. Dr. Tim Kiruhi, excellent presentation. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Uh, I'd, I'd like to invite um, Susan to say something about recruitment and then um, Heglon also to say something about the short courses as he promised, and then we will wind up. This he mentioned about recruitment, but I know you are happy with what ILU gave you. Please, before you leave, if you could recommend to us two or three people, we'll do the follow-up. If you can just give us names and we'll tell them somebody was wishing them well and I will do the necessary. That would be very ideal. I will also send you uh, programs, details of programs. Some of you went up to bachelor's. We are recommending you that you go now to your master's. So I'll make sure that I feed you with all the necessary information. Please come back to school. And uh, yes, and then um, please, anyone else you have an idea, give us the names, we'll do the recruitment. Thank you very much, God bless you. who did not introduce themselves, can you? Uh, Hedron, you can sit there. Did you introduce yourself? Yeah. Okay. I already have an alumni mm. joining the PhD class. Who me? I can get the other one. Wonderful. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. Okay. <laughs> so you can get credit for your yeah. for whatever you registered for. Well done. Okay. Who who had not introduced themselves? I think there are like two. Hmm? Okay. Just, just your name and your your year and program. Yes. Hey, thank you so much, Joyce. Um, yes. Well done. Thank you so much. So let, let's hear from uh, from Eglon. Oh, one more, one more. Okay. Morning. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm glad to be back here. Uh, I'll talk briefly about uh, short courses. One is. Um, if you have excelled in an area which we can sit down and talk, and especially you're very clear on where we'll be able to source the students. I liked my, I mean, when he came and talked about sales and marketing, you know, uh, I think that's an area that uh, we, we do, we currently do not have a short course on sales and marketing. And uh, it would be excellent to have an alumni who is able to teach. We have several. Right now we are having online courses. And what I like about the online courses is 
many who are based outside of Nairobi can be able to plug in. We have strategic management, we have project management, we have a result driven leadership, we have monitoring and evaluation, we have um, uh, talent, uh, I mean, uh, recruiting uh, and discovering talents. And um, these ones are priced very well in, in terms of money. They are all going for 10,000 shillings and uh, they go for, it's, it's, it's strategic and be a big area, but then we craft it within five air key areas, which you do over five weeks. And uh, so far we have seen a very good, uh, good uptake of, of the causes. Uh, for you who are here, um, I would uh, say we can work on work on utilizing you as facilitators. And please, even after this, please let us discuss. But I'll still reiterate for you who have capacity to sponsor others, who we can launch through ILU, the short courses, where they may not have the capacity to pay, but then you are able to bless ILU so that we can bless them then that is also another good area, especially in the counseling causes, in the governance causes, and uh, even in the in, in ministry causes. So thank you very much. Uh, we, we have Whitley from Vice Chancellor's office, who's also a student. Say hello. And we have students here who've been very supportive in organizing events. I think they're also members of the security club. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's my pleasure, my joy to see you all. Of course, some faces familiar, and some was not familiar to me, but I'm so much delighted to see you all. God bless you so much. She has said, I serve in the office of the VC as the <coughs> PA to the VC. Yes. And I'm also a student pursuing my Master of Divinity. Good morning. Uh, I'm Karanja Paul, a student here in ALU, pursuing my first undergraduate, a Bachelor of Arts in Counseling and Psychology. And it's a pleasure having you here. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lina Swangare. I'm a student at ILU. Um, I'm pursuing my undergraduate in Bachelor of Arts in Counseling Psychology, and it's nice to have you here. Thank you. They also participated in the tree planting um, very actively. Pauline has not introduced herself, but you saw her around taking the pictures. She's the one who's been communicating with you and we are truly blessed to, to have her. Okay, so I think we have to come to an end. Even such a good thing has to end, but it means we must organize to have another time where we'll meet together and have more time to engage and uh, you know, bless one another. Hi, good morning, everyone. Oh, my name is Pauline. I'm the communication officer here at ILU. I think we've interacted with some of you via call. I was the one who was calling to ask to confirm your attendance. So it was me. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be calling one of you to come and uh, pray. We have come to the end. Just want to thank you so much. We don't take it for granted that you could be here. Oh, let's come as we, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll be gracious. Oh. We are LU. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, my name is Simon Monda. I'm happy I've seen my friends here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they have come up with a very good investment plan that can help our institution. 
Uh, I did my BTH from this institution, and I've seen many of my friends here. Uh, right now, I'm working with the Christ Center at Gospel Missions, and uh, we are seeing the investment that was done in us. When we see the output out there, there's ever reason of running here and uh, making each one of us feel warm that we're in the right place. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Monda. Thank, thank you very you. much. You. Mark Asobi as well, thank you. Uh, we know you may be online. If you can show your face, others will be able to see you here in the physical meeting. We need to come to a close. We are very sorry again. We realize that maybe next time we need to have a half a day together. But for today, we need to come to an end. And just thank you very much. If there is anything else that uh, maybe, again, we can do together, areas of partnership, ideas, we will be hanging around here. Feel free to share with us. And I thought prompted to say, maybe some of you may even feel, I actually can maybe prepare to give something to ILU. No pressure. We are very happy if you don't give. We are very happy if you give. Uh, it doesn't change our relationship. But uh, again, through maybe uh, Dr. Jenga and Pauline, uh, you can be able to get the help that you need. Thank you very much. Allow me to uh, ask uh, one of us now, uh, maybe because of, uh, to, to balance the gender, although we've been fairly balanced, we try to balance that. So Pastor, please come up and uh, share with us. Pa Patricia, you're one of the pastors. Oh, there's another pastor. Okay, if you're also a pastor, let's come. Let's honor you who are here, who are pastors, yes. Okay, you can come here, please, because of those who are online. Yeah, just brief, a brief uh, closing prayer. Thank you. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the session of today. Men and women sat down and they deliberated on calling us here. And we are grateful, our Father, that we have been able to meet. We thank you for this institution. We thank you for the prayers of those who are before us. We thank you that we can see the prayers working in this institution. How our Father, we uplift this institution to you. That dear Heavenly Father, everything that is planned will go according to your will in Christ Jesus. We thank you for this fellowship today. That even as we walk out of these premises, our Father, your presence will forever remain here. We thank you for the VC and then the entire staff here and we commit them to you. That dear Lord, you give them wisdom and knowledge and power to execute the appointment and the assignment you have given to them. Our Father, grant them the grace, grant them also the anointing. And even as we disperse today, we speak a blessing, we speak peace here. May you go with each and every one of us to our different endeavors. And our Father, may you remind us to support in every way we can. We thank you for the rains. We thank you for Kenya. We thank you for everything, for we are praying, trusting, believing, receiving only in Jesus Christ's name. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Let's take a photo. Go Thank you, Mark. Uh, we appreciate you joining us. God bless you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, sir. It has been Thank a you. blessing to be here. Thank you. If I guess I want to give it, I see you.